hey, we're better than these guys, like, for real. Yeah. What's up Panther Nation? In this next video we're going to take a look at cornerback Troy Pride Jr. out of Notre Dame who the Panthers selected in the fourth round. With Troy Pride you're getting a guy with elite athletic traits. He was a two sport athlete in college participating in both football and track and field. In the ACC Outdoor Track and Field Championships he posted personal bests of 10-5 in the 100 meter dash and 21-16 in the 200 meter dash. So that just shows you the kind of vertical speed that this guy possesses. With Dante Jackson, the Panthers will have one of the fastest cornerback rooms in the NFL. But for that to mean something, you're just going to have to continue to see development in their technique and experience. And that may take a while. So we'll see how these guys develop as professionals. But off the bat, the athletic traits for Troy Pride stand out immediately. He had a very good senior bowl where he was one of the best cornerbacks on the field going against top tier competition. That's probably where he caught the attention of new head coach Matt Rule. So let's dive into it and see what the Panthers are getting with Troy Pride Jr. I really like Troy Pride's potential as a man cover corner. He has all of the traits that you're looking for from his vertical top end speed, he's got quick feet, and his fluid hip movement to be able to transition from back pedal to sprint. So first let's take a look at some coverage reps that demonstrate what kind of potential he has as a man cover corner. Here he's going to use a mirror motor release. There's two things we want you to look at. First his feet, how he uses his choppy feet getting back six inches. And he's going to keep his head down, keying the wide receiver's hips. The reason you want to key his hips because that's where the receiver's going to go. Oftentimes receivers will use shoulder fakes or dance with their feet and that can throw you off. So you want to make sure you keep your head down and watch where his hips are going. Once the receiver commits to a side, watch how Troy Pride opens his hips and he's going to turn and run with the receiver like he's running the route with him. Notice his head is still down to read the receiver's hips to be prepared to break on the in-breaking or out-breaking routes. What he does here, he does, you see the vertical speed, he's able to stay with the wide receiver. And once the receiver gets his head up, head up to look for the ball, Troy Pride's going to reach out and touch him and he's not going to key him to look back as well. He does a good job of getting chest to chest with the receiver to prevent the back shoulder fade and that's going to allow him to get the pass breakup, that PBU. And it's a good coverage rep for Troy Pride. So off the bat, you see what kind of potential that he has as a man coverage corner. On this next play, the receiver is going to do an outside speed release. Now a couple things here about the release of the wide receiver. What you want to do as a corner, you put your arms up and form a T. Your goal is to get the receiver to run around that T. So what, he, what that'll do, it'll throw him off his route pattern and be closer to the sideline where your help is. Or if you're using outside leverage, it'll force him to run more towards your help where your linebackers and safeties are. So one ways you can get him to run around the tee is to jam him, use an offhand jam at the line of scrimmage, or in this case, the receiver does it himself, so Troy Pride doesn't need to do an offhand jam, and he's going to do a good job of just mirroring the receiver throughout his route. Again, he gets to that chest-to-chest -chest phase to prevent that back shoulder fade, but what he want him to see him do here is to get his head around to prevent that pass interference call. Now, he doesn't get a flag here, but it's just something that could be a problem in the league if he doesn't get better at that. But other than that, he gives the quarterback nowhere to throw the ball, and you have another good coverage rep there. Here again, you're going to see a good job of Troy Pride keeping his head down, keying the wide receiver's hips. And once the wide receiver breaks in on that slant route, now he's able to react. You'll see his ability to plant his foot down, get downhill, and he's going to be good playing through the receiver and getting another pass breakup. So again, you see another great coverage rep from Troy Pride. And here again, you're going to see Troy Pride against defending a slant route. Once he does a good job of, again, keying the wide receiver's hips, he gets on him, attaches to the hip on the slant route, and watch him get underneath, play through the receiver, and get another PBU on the play. At the Senior Bowl, Troy Pride was one of my standout performers as he displayed great coverage traits in both one-on-one -on -one drills against wide receivers and in the game itself. In his first play, first again, let's watch his feet at the release. He does a good job keeping his feet moving, head is down, keying the wide receiver's hips. You see, also see him open up his hips and run once the wide receiver commits to the side. 
Now, what I like what he does here is going to keep his head down. He's going to mirror the receiver throughout the route. When the receiver sinks his hips to break on the outbreaking route, look at Troy Pry's head. You can actually see it here. He's looking actually looking down at the wide receiver's hips. Watch what this allows him to do. Just undercut the route and just destroy the route before it ever gets started. So those are the kind of things you like to see from him in terms of his coverage technique. And you saw this throughout the process. He just does a great job in these one-on-one -on -one drills, you know, winning at the release, keying the wide receiver's hips, keeping his head down, having that eye discipline. And he was continuously able to win these reps and shut down these in-breaking or out-breaking routes. So you just see very good coverage traits from Troy Pride that may allow him to become a very good cover corner at the next level. Where Troy Pride's athleticism really shows up is his ability to recover. He may not always win at the release, he may not always get a good offhand jam to throw the receiver off of his route, and he may take false steps occasionally, but his foot speed and ability to recover and get back into position has helped him throughout his career. On this play, you're going to see the receiver do a quick inside move, and it's going to kind of keep Troy Pride a little bit flat-footed. That's going to allow him to get a free outside release into his route. Now what Troy Pride also does here is watch him jam with his left hand or the outside hand. A couple things here. One, it allows the receiver to just swipe down and disengage him. But two, look at his left leg. It's kind of locked there and he's not able to move and open his hips to be able to mirror the receiver. That's why they teach you to offhand jam with your right hand because it's a more natural position to open your hips and run with the receiver. So the receiver is going to get a little bit of separation as, well, as a result of winning on the release there. But watch Troy Pride able to recover. He's able to get back in position to make a play, get in that chest-to-chest -chest position with the ride receiver, and force that tight window throw for the quarterback. Now you can argue it was a bad throw here, but that's your job as a corner to be able to make quarterbacks make perfect passes. And then here against Michael Pittman, a very good wide receiver from USC here. Troy Pride's going to be in this bail technique, and what Michael Pittman's going to do is going to do a quick inside fake here, and it's going to make Troy Pride take a bit of a false step. What you'll see here is watch him be able to flip his hips. You'll see that foot speed to be able to get back in position, get back into that chest-to-chest -chest phase, and he's going to get his head around, locate the football, and be able to get another pass breakup on that play. So you see from those various coverage reps the kind of potential he has as a coverage corner in this league. The question is, what prevented him from reaching his ceiling at Notre Dame? You don't see the ball production there in terms of pass breakups and interceptions. Also, you, he gave up four touchdowns, and he wasn't in that upper tier of corners entering this draft class. When I go through his tape, I just see a lot of things that I think can be fixed. With There's a coachable flaws that can be fixed, and they may allow him to eventually get to that level. So let's take a couple of looks at some of the reps that he wasn't able to win on in college. We talked earlier about the importance of reading the wide receiver's hips and not falling for those shoulder and head fakes. And on this play right here, you're going to see the receiver is going to give him that quick inside move and he's going to bite inside and be out of position. This allows the receiver to get a free outside release and he's now he's in a trail position. He can't get over top on the route to be able to get make that play on the ball. And as a result, you'll see here, USC is able to get a touchdown on the play in the back corner of the end zone. So that's one of the touchdowns that he gave up during his career. On this play here, again, you're going to see the wide receiver give that quick inside move, and that's going to allow him to get that free outside release. Problem on this play is just a little bit flat-footed and bites a little on that inside move. You know, remember, we want to make the receiver run around the tee, but here, you know, he's getting a clean release into his route. So that's going to make it difficult just from the jump. Now, he does do a good job of recovering here. You know, he's going to mirror the receiver and run with him, but look at all the separation that the receiver is able to gain from him. So it's going to be hard for Pride here to get in that chest-to-chest -chest position to prevent that back shoulder throw, and the receiver is going to make a good adjustment to the football, and they're able to get a catch on him on that play. His ball skills can also be better. I think a lot of times he does good coverage reps, but just wasn't in position to make a play on the ball by getting his head around like here. He's right there. He's in the chest-to-chest -chest position. Now get your head around, get your arm out, and make that pass break up. So I think he left a lot of plays on the field, particularly in this Georgia game where you'll see a couple of reps there. You just see very good feet here. He's going to mirror the receiver very well. He's in great position, has him chest to chest, but now get your head around, locate the football, and make the play. So I saw him too often just get beat on his back shoulder phase, and I just think that just comes around to being able to get into that chest to chest phase of your coverage rep, getting your head around, locating the football, and making the play. So again, he's got the coverage ability. He's in position, but I just think he left a lot of plays on the field. These should all be potential PBUs or possibly interceptions on some of these reps. 
And lastly, I just think body positioning can improve on some reps. Like here, he does a good job of opening in his hips, running with the receiver. He's got a good coverage rep here. He's right with the guy. But think about in basketball when you want to box out and get the rebound. Like here, the receiver is just able to box him out, high point the ball. And when you're behind him like that, it's just difficult to get up and get the pass break up on that play. That's another thing that we can see get better at the next level to help him reach his high ceiling. But overall, this should give you a good idea of the skill set that Troy Pride possesses as a man cover corner. I really like his game and his skill set. He has high potential, and I think he can become a quality player in this league if he continues to work hard and the coaches put him in position to succeed. You just like the traits he possesses, his foot quickness, his foot speed, and his fluid hip mo and mobility. And I just think all of these things combined should allow him to have a successful career as a Carolina Panther. Get you, boys,